Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, this week I've been back up in Genoa Bay working on that aft bulkhead for MV Zephyrus and happily I've got the bulkhead now in mahogany. Um, there's lots to do yet, but I think I'm over the hump. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. I'd like to send a big thanks to all my viewers and especially uh, those supporters on PayPal and Patreon. It's you folks that keep the show going. Thanks ever so much. Let's get to work. Well, good beautiful morning. My goodness, isn't it glorious out there? Oh my gosh, this is not a bad place to work. Okay, so yes, we got the template of the bulkhead on last night, and well, I would have showed you some shots of it from the interior, but I was completely overwhelmed by how glorious it looked. Um, I then put the plastic up afterwards, so it's not worth taking a shot of now. Fear not, it won't be long before you get to see what the real thing looks like. Anyway, um, very pleased with the layout, very pleased with the fit. It's time to apply that shape to that very expensive, very hard to find, massive piece of mahogany. Scary. Very? Scary. Scary, yes, yeah, kind of scary. Okay. Scary. Now while this is a very wide piece of one inch Sapelli mahogany, it's still, of course, not wide enough for the rather tall bulkhead. Um, so we have to perform some cutting and splicing tricks. So you can easily see what I mean. The template is much larger than the piece of wood. Okay, so here's the trick I've been imagining for the last, well, year. Um, I'm going to basically move the template up to about here, cut the bottom curve through the mahogany, and then exchange the two pieces of wood so that the bottom piece with the bottom curve will fill the bottom third or so of the uh, new bulkhead and the bottom piece will become the top piece now of course the curve isn't exactly the same But we will have a lot more material that way by sharing the curve between the bottom and the top Of course when the two pieces come together there will be a gap But the gap will be straight on both edges and I can put a splice piece in uh, To deal with that with splines and of course the two posts are actually separate pieces of wood which will be vertical grain in here and connected with dowels. That's the plan. Let's see how it turns out in real life. So if I line up the template um, so that I have enough meat in the top of the piece of mahogany to deal with the bottom piece of the bulkhead, about there, and then I'm going to take some little bits of tape so I don't make too many temporary markings on this piece of mahogany. So I could start again roughly there. And more importantly, or equally importantly, I have to make a mark on the template how far down I've been able to, uh, or up, I suppose I've been able to supply wood. So now all I have to do is take the template and move it this way and line up with that same mark again, roughly, 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 roughly. And now, out of the bottom part of this wood, I'm going to get wood material down to about here. Or maybe if I show you with this end, it's a little closer and you can see better what I'm talking about. So, the, the top piece brings me mahogany up to here. And as you can well see, the bottom piece brings me mahogany down to here. So I just need to put a splice in or an extra block in for this relatively small piece. The nice thing about it too is that it's not at a really sharp um, or a tangent of the arc here, so it won't have any risk of splitting off in time. In fact, I'm super pleased about the way that all went. Before I can get all excited about cutting any curves on here, I have to 
dress the edges. When I buy wood, I actually don't get them to dress the edges because I'm almost always ripping them up into smaller sections to do something else with. And so it saves a fraction of cost on this stuff. So the edges aren't dressed. But in this case, because I'm going to cut these two curves and then swap the pieces and then um, put in that splice piece, I need perfect edges for those joints to come in here. So I have to dress these edges and I don't have an edger. Uh, the best I can do is take my circular saw and rip off a tiny little sliver. Ripping guide set up close, close, close. One very long, satisfying, teeny little bit of mahogany and one relatively clean edge. This will be just fine. At this point, you decide where to use the wood. In other words, how to align um, the wood with the thing that you're making. Uh, trying to avoid defects or heartwood or sapwood or but this wood is almost perfect it's a little lighter on the bottom edge here um, but it's not it's certainly not um, sapwood so I'm not gonna worry about it. It, it it is pretty much defect free okay so that means we start uh, we start uh, we, we just start as well up here right right And mark. I'm going to transfer the template off the edge of the um, uh, board here just to, can you, to continue the curve. Uh, not that I need it, but it'll make it a lot easier for me to get the saw started to make that long arc. And at the other end. Okay. This would definitely be one of the most stressful cuts. Uh, this would be easier the other way around. Okay, so now it's pretty clear to see that I just need a couple little blocks to put in here and um, we have all the material we need for this bulkhead. Okay, so this is the process of seeing if the alignment is adequate to make a really tight uh, spline fit here. And this is definitely going to be just fine here. That will all but disappear. Um, very pleased. I'm actually gonna slide it back out a bit so that this cut here isn't right on the butt of this. I can make a clean cut. Very nice. Okay, with that all fitting pretty well, I then I'm gonna put the template back in for a moment. And um, the reason for that is I wanna make sure I know um, how close to here uh, I'm gonna be coming because I don't wanna put the splines so that they're visible in the end. In other words, I want it to be a solid wood connection where I'm cutting this arc. So if I just put this back here somewhere, I'll draw the arc in.
Okay, so this is the starboard side one, and uh, here's my curve of the window. So I want to stop my routing uh, for the spline uh, about three quarters of an inch or so before this line. Let's do the easy one first. And the port side one. A little, build a little bridge down here as a uh, fence extension, table extension, etc. Well, that's pretty close right off the bat. Just a hair. Looks good. There is a little twist in this wood. Um, so I'm a little concerned about maintaining pressure down here. Um, of course I can do it, but a little support would help. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I've never even uh, used these. These are little uh, feather boards that came with this uh, router table. And uh, maybe maybe this will be great. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, uh, do I even know how to use them? They go, they go down in here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let's put a, some real good pressure on that. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's see how this goes. Okay, I may have had too much pressure on the feather boards, but eh, 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 certainly did the trick, I think. Yeah. Okay, I'll try that with a little less pressure on the feathering board. Okay, or feather board, whatever the heck you call this thing. Still quite a bit more than I probably needed. Okay. All right, well, I'm very happy with the seams uh, from the outside, uh, but of course it's worth having a look at the other side just to make sure it's as good. Very, very nice. Okay, so we should be fine. A little trick to make sure spline joints stay really, really tight is to slightly ease the inner edge of the face by taking just a little sandpaper and just a few strokes at a slight bevel. What that will do will just create a little bit of a concave surface to the edge of the board. Make sure you do not touch the outer edge or you'll be very, very sad. It does a couple of things. One, it guarantees that the outer edge is as tight as possible. And my justification for this bit of a hack is that it creates a little bit of a void on the inside void, microscopic, for a little more epoxy or glue or whatever you're using to hold your joint together. That's all there is to it.
Okay, well, nothing more I can do. Now all I do is uh, wait patiently and hope it's perfect. All right, this morning has been mostly about trying to start to fare these surfaces here as well as get a little more filler on the bulk of the glasswork back here. Again, I'm using this technique, which perhaps is completely irresponsible of running it fairly thin, makes itself level really, really well and self equalize. Anyway, we'll see if this turns out well. It doesn't gonna have to pick up drips on the edge here a little bit. Um, also yesterday, look at this fantastic paint job. Oh, I don't know if we can get any highlights on here, but that uh, Lady Zephyrus has done to her boat, all new paint through here. Ah, oh, did a fantastic job. When you think of that there were two huge Dutchmans in here not that long ago. Anyway, starting to come together. So, time to carry on with this bulkhead. Uh, pretty excited. Okay, let's get going. All right then, so this uh, hopefully will sand up really nice and yes of course I'm going to sand it I need I'm a creature of instant gratification so let's get that uh, looking pretty and then talk about the elephant in the room that went okay how about this one Excellent. As long as it didn't pull off any mahogany, I'm happy. Just check, shall we? All good, and all good. Pretty much perfect. All right then, so I did promise you an elephant and this is where I deliver. We'll need the template. Okay, so if I reposition the template uh, at least roughly where it goes, in fact, that's exactly where it goes, um, you can see that I have lots of material to cut out the windows from um, the bulkhead I have made. But they're these, these two things. These two vertical posts, which by the way, we've um, decided to move in a little bit to just improve the general proportions of the whole thing. But that's not the problem. The problem is attaching it. Well, I had intended in my fantasy of fantasies that I was going to dowel these in. Um, now there's a bunch of things that made that difficult. One of the things that was a problem was that these are on an angle, um, the top and the bottom, and I couldn't put the dowels in perpendicular. Well, I might be able to anyway, but they wouldn't be parallel. If I tried to make them parallel to the post, I'd have to jig them and figure them out. It would be a lot of jigging and mess. But the most complex thing, which is the elephant part, is I would have had to do it at the same time I did this glue up, which means I would have had to have already cut this out. And that got a little cart before the horse. And I just said, you know what? I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm not gonna dowel. So this way, I got to build this, which I'm very happy with. I then stick this on here. I trace this out. I cut the big window and I figure out what I'm gonna do about the posts. I have several ideas, but I'll develop them a little more before I share them with you. Okay, so now it's just a big trace, right? Big trace. Make one of those, exactly the same as one of these. He's busy, and the outside. Is it that easy? I suppose it is. Hmm. 
Now I can have a boat shed with a template hanging on the wall, just like every other boat shed in the world. Maybe not a bamboo one. I'm laying out these uh, new posts now because these two edges are the only pure horizontal edges on the uh, bulkhead and in a little while they're going to be cut away and there will be no remaining square markers on it in case for some reason i need to refer to vertical or horizontal again during this project just so i have lots of options i think i'll also trace a nice big long uh, horizontal line onto here as well and i really don't know what i need this for but it's the kind of thing that if I don't have it, I'll need it, and uh, it's easy to sand out when I sand everything else out afterwards. All right. Okay, the posts. Now, I think I mentioned originally they were going to be attached with dowels. Um, but seeing as that plane is not parallel to that plane, and neither of them are perpendicular to the posts which are vertical, aligning the dowels and figuring them out might have been a bit troublesome. And of course, having to close the dowels at the exact same time I close the other uh, glue ups. I, I just didn't want to get into all that. So then I thought about this idea that I would set these in here um, with two pieces half the thickness, um, in other words half inch, and set them in in a little uh, uh, diamond. So I, they would sandwich and you'd see the point there and a point down here and they would meet like that. And it, But you know, I like the idea because it added a little stiffness and it was kind of elegant, but it was a heck of a lot of work to do something relatively simple. So what I think I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go back to a spline, but hey, how can you do a spline at this point? Well, I sort of can. I can cut a um, dado down in here um, with a side cutting uh, router bit and one up in here, so that will be hidden. And then I can cut it in here um, just from one end and opened at one end. So, and then if this is perfectly cut to fit, I slide my um, splines in because this and this are converging. I can then slide this piece in into those dados, into those splines, nice and tight, beautiful. And yes, this end will be exposed, but it will be exposed with the extension of the vertical grained spline that I'm going to put in. I'm going to run the grain this way to make it stronger. And if I clean that up nicely, it, I, I think it's a small compromise to make a strong functional joint that is reasonably simple to do. And, and I, I won't say it's simple. So now to measure off um, the actual post pieces, and I'm just going to slide them under here and uh, scrap them. Now those cuts may have seemed a bit cavalier, uh, but there's no way I'm going to get those cuts perfect with the saw, especially because they're actually curves. I have a solution. Enter the stationary belt sander. Uh, with this, I can keep the edges good and square, and I can even round over uh, a concave a little bit on the inside here, and I can easily do a convex by just rocking it back and forth a little bit. I think this is my best solution. Well, let's see if I can turn this into a side mount stationary belt sander. All right, here we go, here we go.
Well, that thing saved the day, I must say. I managed to get these both done, uh, certainly to a tolerance that I'm very, very happy with. And now I just have to figure out how I'm going to actually attach them. <laughs> I think my sliding splat, anyway. Who knows? Well, hello there, and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week. Coming to you this week from the cozy wheelhouse of MV Jordy because it is a bit chilly and nasty outside and probably about to rain. Let's jump straight to the beer. This is the second beer brought to me uh, by Alfie from Life is Like Sailing, uh, if you watched the show last week. And this is called Long John, also from Northwest Territories uh, Brewing, and it's a red ale, and I've been looking forward to this for over a week. So let's see. Oh, what this looks like. I do love a red ale and I don't get that many opportunities to have one. Well, what a great week. Got the mahogany bulkhead basically done. I mean, yes, there's lots left to do, but all the kind of didn't know how I was going to do it stuff. Well, that's sort of a fib because of course we still don't know how I'm going to attach those two uprights, but um, I might have a clue about that. Anyway, very good. The uh, Long John uh, from Northwest Territories, red ale. Oh, it's creamy. It's, it's, wow, it's not a sharp ale at all. It's very creamy, very um, warm sort of feeling to it, plus that red. Love it, absolutely. What is the flavor of red? I don't know, but it has a distinct flavor. Okay, let's wait, get right to giving away a t shirt, shall we? The winner is uh, Kim Taylor. Kim Taylor, get a hold of me, and congratulations. We'll make sure you get your t shirt. I'd like to thank three new Patreons that came aboard in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Terry and Michael Byrne, uh, Sarah and Ian Bayless, and Rick Gleason. Thank you all so very much for coming aboard. I really appreciate it. That is pretty good. Okay. The word of the week this week will be pocket. Yes, pocket. That's all I have to say. Cheers. See you next week.